Governor Nasser El Fais raised the alarm of activities of Boko Haram and I swapped terrorists in Kaduna State. Will the situation get worse before it improves in that part of the country? Also on the breakfast, we'll be looking at the Confederation Cup Finals on our sports segment. And also, do you think Jose Pesciaro is the right man for the Super Eagles job? And of course, as usual, we have uh, the headlines of the pages of today's National Daily. So these ahead on the breakfast. Very good morning to you. Welcome to the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Mercy, looking quite dapper. It's been some time. Did you miss me? <laughs> yes, of oh, course. I miss, miss you. Me? It's good to have you back. I'm yes, sure. and uh, you, you're looking quite. I mean, it's like you went on a break yourself. No, I didn't. I haven't been on any break. I've been uh, here all the time. All right. I, I also I went on a stressful break. You know no, what I mean? I don't think you, you look <laughs> stressful. You look good at yourself as well. All right. Fantastic. <laughs> no, he doesn't need to do that. All right. <laughs> Well, we start off with uh, top trending conversations, generating different reaction in different spaces. And one of it is the fact that IPOP has warned, uh, you know, very renowned preacher, Kumui, Reverend Kumui, as we all know him, W.F. Kumui, I hope I got that correctly, uh, not to go ahead with the planned crusade. And, and, and that has also gotten a lot of Nigerians talking about what's going on, especially, mm. you know, in the southeastern part of Nigeria. W what do you make of this now? It, it feels like you have IPOP giving the orders, the Absol coming government of the day. Well, it's, um, it's, it's, it's one of those uh, things that you go, hey, nothing can surprise me anymore in the country. I mean, um, so l let's see how it pans. Out. I mean, I'm I'm very interested in seeing what comes out of this. You know, you know they say power past power. You know, what I'm saying so. Um, if the the group has um, gone ahead to to now determine who should hold a crusade in the southeastern states and who shouldn't, um, let's see let's see what happens. You know, IPOB is not as as um, as popular as it used to be because of the role that uh, unknown government have been playing. Now, the group has recently, in a couple of days ago, come out, that's the latest one, to say that, oh, they do not know who these unknown gunmen are, those who, who are enforcing uh, the Monday sit at home are. Um, so, so, you know, they're trying to distance themselves from the carnage going on in Imo State, and most recently, and sadly, in Anambra State, which was very peaceful uh, some, some, until some months ago. So um, to see that uh, Ima Powerful, the um, media and publicity secretary uh, of, of the group, it's, it's faceless, you don't know who he is, probably is, is not his real name, uh, has released a statement warning or cautioning a man of God, a preacher, as revered as W.F. Kumui, who we, we, we all were born to meet. You know, we just were born to, we grew up to hear about deeper Christian life ministries. Um, let's see how it plays out. I know that there are a lot of people from, uh, in the deeper life, you know, church who are from the Southeast. Um, will this make the group less popular? Time will tell. You know, but the, the recent uh, politics of the country has shown that you cannot, um, you know, downplay or, uh, um, you know, you cannot, you cannot downplay the importance of the religious constituency in the political and social conversation in Nigeria. You know, you can't downplay that at all. That's why, you know, the political parties and the state governors try to massage the ego of the, 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 the men of God in their states to try and, you know, uh, get 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 the members, you know, to support them. It's like uh, IPOB going out and, you know, cautioning for Dambaka. You know the grounds of support he has in the state. You have people who are from the southeast who, out of a passion, a genuine passion, may have a sympathy for the IPOB uh, method of agitation. Okay, this may um, may test that sympathy. It may test us in, but even people who are not members of deeper life will have to also, you know, think about this because they'll say, ah, it's Papa. It's Papa. 
<laughs> but but let's also look at this on this other side. Uh, recently, you remember that the uh, recently elected governor of Anambra State, Charles Ludo, paid a, a visit. I was going to say courtesy visit. He visited Namdi Kanu. It may well be a courtesy <laughs> visit. <laughs> he visited Namdi yeah. Kanu, you know, in prison. Mm. And, and um, part of the response from Namdi Kanu is the fact that a lot of persons are masquerading. Uh, impersonating IPOP. So now it brings us back to the question whether or not this statement is being made by IPOP or mm. you have persons impersonating IPOP. Mm. Uh, that's another one. But we hope that the authorities and those who have been saddled with that responsibility will do their due diligence. And that's the work of the police. Because I feel like over time, uh, the agency called the police uh, has been relegated and uh, they need to come back to where they should start from. That's on the one hand. But it's quite worrisome, uh, such a situation. Uh, you know, we've still also been grappling with the situation of protest and the fact that uh, you have the government responding in a certain way because if you have the police or the military reacting mm -hmm. during protests, you ask yourself, do the people have a right to a peaceful assembly? And so it's, it's, it's really um, a dicey situation. Now, uh, you have IPOP saying that, you know, the reverend shouldn't have a crusade. Mm -hmm. Because of of the security situation in the in the region, you know, in, in a place not being safe, mm. you know, um, um, so so on one side you have this 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 like you said uh, um, this this statement cautioning the the man of God. On the other side, look at the 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 logic of what they're saying. Indeed, the security situation in the southeast is is like my people in Calabar would say something talk about, <laughs> you know. But who who caused who caused the who who you know, caused the shots? Yes, yes. No, no, no. Who even is responsible for what we're having now in the southeast, you know? But but if we maybe we should just forget about the cause and look at what we're having now, the effect. And they're saying you need to also be careful. It, we don't want anyone to die, you know, as a result of your crusade. You don't want anyone so, to be so, attacked. So what, what does that really mean? What, what's, what does that really mean? Anybody mm -hmm, die? Mm -hmm, anybody mm -hmm. being attacked? Well, well, is, is well, it well, that they're being... Because mm -hmm. you can also take out the fact that a lot has been happening. I mean, it leaves you to question. Namdi Kanu already is known as the leader. And if he has come out to say that persons are impersonating and masquerading themselves to being IPOP and carrying out some of these um, you know, killings and attack then there should be a lot of investigation. We should be worried about it. And that's, and that's it on the one hand. So the question now is, who is speaking? Is, is this really IPOP? Or so, so uh, uh, yeah, Imam it, Powerful, is, be... is, 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 it is IPOB. Okay. It is IPOB because um, it was signed by Imam Powerful, and this is the communication channel that we know. But I'll just say, take a quote of what you know, that statement said, a, a brief a sentence or two. It says, quote, IPOB will not allow anyone to die because of this crusade scheduled to hold in Abba. The operation of criminals operating as unknown gunmen infiltrating events is high, and they will blame it on IPOB, hmm. is what he's saying. That's why I went back to, uh, I started with that uh, statement where IPOB distanced themselves from those um, uh, 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 enforcing the Monday sit at home. So I imagine they hold the, the event. Maybe the crusade goes into... Uh, Monday, for instance, and then these guys try to force members of the church or those who want to go and get salvation, all right, who want to go and pray that God forgives their sins or go to pray for peace in the southeast, they stop them on the way and start shooting them, start burning them, start beating them. He, he's afraid that the public will turn on IPOB. You know, but it's, it's interesting now, um, uh, Mercy, that this group now are now trying to say, Please, don't hold an event. Or we don't want anyone to come and blame us if um, anything, happens. anything happens. Mm. But, but, I mean, you see, that's why when you, you use a, a method to achieve certain aims, you need to think about tomorrow. You need to think about tomorrow. Um, so, 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 it's, so it's true that a I lot mean, of persons I mean, are, I mean, people are impersonating the hype. That's what it means. If this is what they're saying. Anyways, we need to move away from that. Also on Top Trending this morning, uh, you have uh, the management of Ladoke Akintola University of Technology, Ogbomosho, directing members of staff and students of the institution to resume, uh, I mean, activities on the 26th of May. This is contrary to the strike action that we know that ASO has embarked on. 
over time. So it feels like someone has snitched or someone is betraying. But at what point did they come to this now? What, what could be responsible? First of all, when ASU embarked on that strike before the extension, a lot of people have queried the fact that ASU, uh, you, you don't really have uniformity. Everyone is not speaking in the same voice. So you have different parts saying, okay, we're going to do this and different uh, union. Apart from the fact that you have ASU, you also have the NASU, SANU and all of that are they in unison. Uh, but this is also um, another one that has called for a lot of concern. And uh, people are beginning to wonder what exactly it is. Is, is it right that you have uh, the university pulling out of the strike? Oh. It's quite interesting, Mercy. There was a protest in the school some days ago. So this is seen as an intervention uh, from the school authorities uh, to try and see how they can, they can listen to the yearnings of, uh, of the students. Um, Laduka Kintola University of Technology is a tertiary institute, institution located in Ogbomosho, in Oyo State. And, and the university enrolls about 30,000 students, 30,000 students, and has about uh, 3,000 workers, all right, including contract staff. So all these people are at home because of the strike. All these people are at home uh, because of the strike. This school was formerly known as or your state university. So it's a state institution, and I'm sure we're aware uh, of the differences in the salary structure and salary scheme and the conditions of work for federal university lecturers and state university lecturers. Now, the state university lecturers are obviously in this strike uh, as a mark of solidarity, you know, for their, 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 their um, colleagues and their comrades, let's call it that. In the in the federal at the federal level because they don't have the same issues you know so um it's quite interesting to see that a state-owned tertiary institution in nigeria is taking the bold step to say let's resume academic session and the letter you know is is interesting it says resumption of 2021 2022 academic session so we're in 2022 so going to 2023 you see so it shows how far be behind we are um, but I was still looking at the comments on the comments of the students, you know, on, uh, in response to the Twitter, uh, the tweet by the school on the school's official Twitter account. And while some were, um, you know, celebrating, jubilating, and saying it's great to be back, um, some were saying it's not happening, that the ASU in Lautech will not agree to such uh, a move. So this, these are some of the dynamics. But this is a state-owned institution. Um, and some are asking, does, does this imply that Lautech has pulled out of ASU because it is a union as a body. We don't have the ASU of private universities and ASU for public universities. We have only one ASU. So when they go for meetings to declare strike, they all go. You know, as they say, solidarity forever. <laughs> it's solidarity forever. Solidarity together, you know, and Every, one for all, all for one. Yes, this is unfortunate. So if Cross River State University, which you and I know well, Crutek, or River State University, which is one of the best run universities in this country, <clears throat> um, if Wiki pays all the university lecturers their salaries. In other words, you're saying that Wiki is... And, Wiki is and does everything. Or um, Ayade, who is doing so well, <laughs> pays the university lecturers can we not all, can all we their salaries. I know why you're laughing. All their salaries. <laughs> they will still stay at home because of solidarity. This is the the situation we find ourselves in, unfortunately. So, I, like I would always say, I don't know why we have to stay at this position uh, when we constantly profess that education is the bedrock of every nation. I don't know who's right, I don't know who's wrong, but it doesn't even make any sense. Because if you look at the reality, you have the lecturers, salaries are still going. Salaries haven't been stopped, so they are being paid. Government is having a great time. You have politicians politicking, buying tickets for 100 million naira. Whether or not they're going to become a flag bearer, nobody cares. I don't, I, and I, then, I, I, and, don't, and, I don't get why people are always talking about no, politicians, no, 100 no million way. naira, and, so, so and then putting us to strike. And it's people's it, it private has, money. So it's private money. We're it's just saying that these things would happen. Everybody's having a great time with their lives. These are stakeholders. You can't take them out of the equation. I, if I'm an aspirant with my 100 million and I want to no, contest, no, but, how is Asu Strike my problem? No, so let, 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 Kofi, let's get to this Or point. should, should a, a private political party go and use this it, money? It has nothing to, to do with a private problem. political party. Okay. For instance, you have Chris Ngigay. Mm-hmm. 
who is vying to become. I mean, he's he, apart from the fact that he's resigned and probably dropped his interest and not wanting to become. Mm -hmm. These are the concerns. We're saying that they are stakeholders. For every time you say that you have a stakeholder, whether or not they have how, a direct... How, how much is it Kofi, Kofi, is whether, or not, for? whether or not you have a direct interest or not a direct interest, mm -hmm. what we're saying is it concerns us. Now, usually with policy formulation and policy implementation, you don't have to have direct, you know, you don't have to become the president. You don't have to be at the forefront of it to ensure that it happens. It should concern all of us. If we say that Nigeria is our business and developing this country is our business, we can relegate. We can step away and say it's not my business because I'm not, because these are stakeholders. So it's okay that we're, we're waking up and saying we're doing okay. this. Nobody's saying it's not okay. your private money. Let, you let can me, spend all of that. Let me understand what and you're also, saying. And also, nobody's also not saying I, I want to understand what you're saying. I what what I'm question. saying is this, is yeah. that are you saying, at the are you end saying, of the day, yeah. you have Aswan strike and the people who are suffering, you have the student. At the end of the day, they have nothing else to do. Mm -hmm. Some of them, you, we already talked about the academic session and the calendar. If you look at it, they are already behind schedule. They're already behind time. And so everybody's having a great time. It's Not necessarily that it should be. Yes, everybody's having a great time. The politicians are having a great time. They're also part of the system. You also have um, uh, the lecturers who are having a great time. Their salaries will come in. So who's suffering? That's yeah. exactly what so, we're So are you, are, you, are you saying that um, maybe if I'm a, um, a minister in, in, in federal government that has failed to resolve the ASU or come to an agreement with ASU, and I want to run for political office, I should say, oh, ASU's money has not been given to them. Students are still at home. Uh, let me stay back and rest my ambition and not spend this my money for now until it's solved. No, no one is saying that anybody should rest their ambition, but everybody is saying that we're all part of the system. Now, we are a system. Whether or not you like it, whether or not you want to agree, is a system. And so in systems, you have different units. We're together as a system. Nigeria is a system. We're a whole. And we're all part of the institution and the structure. And so you have the fact that you always have those who make policies. You have those who influence policies. And this is part of the chain of command. And you cannot take them away. We're all saying that at what point or the other. You might directly not be responsible. It might not be um, within your poor view to call the shots, but it's also within your jurisdictions. And so if we say that we have people who influence policy, decisions are taken. And sometimes you have the likes of Dangote who don't necessarily have to you know, blink an eyelid and things would happen because of who they have become over time. And that's what we're saying. We're just saying that for the betterment of the Nigerian system for the betterment of Nigeria, then we need to pay attention. It's a collective situation. Everybody can constantly say, it, it's more like saying, oh, it's not my business. I'm not the Minister of Education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not my I, business. I, I, I because think, I'm not the one, I'm not think, asked to, what, yes, what's my business? I've heard you, Mercy. I think there is a, there's a, there's a herd um, uh, uh, um, sort of like opinionism in the country today that people express. Um, it's called a populist opinion and well-intentioned, but not critical. Um, um, it's just like when the, the Minister of State for Education uh, also picked the form, and people say, ah, how can you begin form when there's a strike? It's, it, for me, I didn't see the logic in that, you know, because there is, it's, it's more complicated than that. You know, it's more complicated than that. However, I understand um, when yourself and others are looking at it from maybe a moral point of view, you said it's a system and all that. But, um, yeah, but people are, are, are free uh, to, to decide what they want. It's just like people screaming blue murder when they had 100 million naira. You know, it, it, my, my, my brains almost blow up because 100 million naira is not much these days. And if you want to look at the, the dollar rate or exchange for that 100 million naira, this is the lowest or lower than the APC collected from its members in 2019. 100 million naira ain't money today, you know. So, you know, some of these arguments, I know it's, 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 no, it's, no, it's no, dangerous no. When, when, when media person like myself tries to tell the public, it, you know, you, you're, not, you're not getting it. 
you know, we, we miss, I think no, we so, miss. So at the end of the day. You, you can't tell uh, people, you, you can't, know, so you, at we the should end not the bring day, the ASU strike and say, oh, why can't you be buying 100 million naira from when there's ASU strike? That's not the point. That's it's, not the it's, point. It's, it's, the point here is yeah. you have everybody having a great it's time. That's the truth. No, I, 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 I cited an example and I said that in all of this, everybody's having a great time. You could be probably there, you know, having everything working for you, going about your holiday. It's none of your business. What I'm trying to say is that in, in all of this confusion that's going mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. and the fact that you're having the back and forth with ASU and they're, they're not agreeing with the government, is that you have a group of persons in the middle who don't even have anything to do. I mean, to this other side, the people who are on this other side of the divide is ASU. Salary is going on. This other side, they have a right to do whatever they want to do. They can buy their forms. They're having a good time. They're achieving their visions. But you have people who are still writing. Do you also know that 1.7 million Nigerians have actually purchased the form to oh, write? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, 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 also, I no, no. Can um, you can you just give me a time? We're not saying the strike is is, is no, no. But what I'm also continue. trying to say is that you have these people, and so you also have people that up until now, um, even the Ladoke University that's come about Kintola saying they want to go back is that they want to start 2000, uh, you know, 2021, 2021 academic mm. session when we're in 2022. So my point here is everybody is having a great time, but nobody cares about the student. It's just simple. And nobody's saying is anybody's right. But we know that in the, in, in, you know, in the entire process of the policy formulation, you would still have some persons, you will still have some interest. And we can't fold our hands and say, oh, it's not necessarily our business. We constantly call the president for things that doesn't even concern the president, not within his poor view. You have agencies who should be responsible, but these agencies don't take responsibility. And then we, you know, we hit the blame on the president. Should that be the case? We're saying that it's a collective responsibility. We can relegate that. We can throw our arms and say that's what it is. But of course, you have a right to, you know, buy a form of a hundred million naira. You know, go wherever it is. Go on a holiday you know, as long as you can achieve it. It's yeah, nobody's you know, problem. You know, you know, it's not I mean, your business. You know, it's, it's, I understand where you're coming from. I, I was even um, saying when people were complaining and shouting, ah, how can they set the hundred million naira for the form? And I said, see, there are eighteen political parties in Nigeria. And the political parties are private, you know, at their associations that anyone can join or refuse to join. Um, so why, I mean, if, if you, don't, you don't agree with, with the modus operandi or the methods or the way a particular party is doing their things, why for Scott's sake are you there? You can go or move your support to another group. Even you can vote against them. You say, I, I disagree with your view. You know, Correct. So I, mm, that, that's absolutely. Me, you know, so, so anyway, let, let's move on. But I think the, the important point we're making is that the university is calling its students back, and we'll see if the lecturers will heed to this this call. And uh, it will be interesting to see if the lecturers will go back to classroom because last time we checked, like someone said on Twitter, um, Lautech has not pulled out of ASU. So let's see how it goes. But this is the unfortunate situation, you know, we find ourselves in. All right, time to move on. And uh, of course, uh, we uh, have one last story. President Mohamed Buhari has departed to Abu Dhabi uh, on a condolence visit. I, I saw um, a, a picture of the president. Uh, it's an official picture, black and white picture, of him looking out of his, uh, his, um, uh, his Air Force, his, his private jet window, or the presidential jet window. And it was quite interesting. Um, uh, some Nigerians are you know, talking about this. Um, why the president is is traveling on a condolence visit? You know his um his his travels are well documented. Mercy, and uh, this isn't uh, a new culture or a new thing for the president to do to travel outside of the country, and then people will be asking questions uh, and all that. He's also um going to to Abu Dhabi to meet uh, the new president. Uh, of that country, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayyan. Um, in, while in the Arab nation, like we said, he is going to condo, convey his condolence me message or condolences uh, on the passing on of ex-president and ruler of Abu Dhabi, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nayyan. Now, Abu Dhabi is one of the Emirates. You have um, the United Arab Emirates as a country or as a nation, but the components you have. Abu Dhabi being one, that is the capital of the United Arab Emirates, and then the popular Dubai that we all love to go to is also there. But people do not know, most people do not know and think that Dubai is the capital of the UAE. Abu Dhabi actually is the capital 
of the UAE. So they have a new president, and the, our president is headed there to meet with him. That's the, uh, the major reason for his, his trip. And while he's there, he will also be con con conveying his condolences on the passing on of the ex-ruler and ex-president of, uh, of Abu Dhabi. Well, um, that hasn't really, you know, sit well with a lot of Nigerians because you have a conversation saying, why would the president even travel when you have a lot of situation going on in the country? But should the president travel? Does he have a right to travel? I mean, what is it traveling for? These are some of the questions we need to answer, but that's the size of our conversation this morning on Top Trending. We'll definitely return on Monday with more interesting, uh, just making the rounds in different spaces. We'll take a break now, and when we return, it will be time for us to look at the front pages of National Dailies. I am a messy bobo, and Coffee Battles is back on the show. Good morning.